एच सी वर्मा चैप्टर ट्वेंटी फाइव क्वेश्चन सेवन वन के जी ऑफ आइस एट जीरो डिग्री सेल्सियस इज मिक्सड विथ वन के जी ऑफ स्टीम एट हंड्रेड डिग्री सेल्सियस वट विल बी द कम्पोजिशन ऑफ द सिस्टम वेन थर्मल इक्लिब्रियम इज रीच्ड वेन द सिस्टम रीचेज इक्लिब्रियम दे आर थ्री पॉसिबिलिटीज द फर्स्ट पॉसिबिलिटी इज दैट ऑल द आइस इज नॉट मेल्टेड इन दैट केस द फाइनल टेम्परेचर ऑफ द सिस्टम हैज टू बी जीरो डिग्री सेल्सियस but that would be possible only if the amount of heat required to melt the ice is more than the amount of heat released by condensing the steam and cooling the water form to 0 degree celsius at equilibrium the system will contain some ice and some water the second possibility is that the heat required to melt the ice and then heat the water thus form to 100 degree celsius is less than the heat released in condensing all the steam In this case all the steam will not condense and the final composition will have some uncondensed steam and water also the final temperature of the system will be 100 degree celsius the third possibility is that all the steam is condensed and all the ice is melted the final composition in this case will contain only water and its temperature can be anywhere between 0 degree celsius to 100 degree celsius our first task is to determine what will happen in this question In order to do that we just calculate the heat released or consumed during different processes and see which one is greater. Let us first find the heat released in case all the steam is condensed. The heat released will be mass of steam into the latent heat of vaporization of water. Mass is 1 kg and latent heat of vaporization for water is 2.26 into 10 to the power 6 joule per kg. Therefore 2.26 into 10 to the power 6 joules of energy will be released if all the steam is condensed. The amount of heat required to melt the ice is mass of ice into latent heat of fusion. Since the latent heat of fusion of ice is far less than the latent heat of vaporization of water, all the ice will melt. Now we need to check if water formed by molten ice heats up to 100 degrees Celsius or not. The heat required in increasing the temperature of water to 100 degrees Celsius is mass of water into specific heat into change in temperature that is 100 degrees Celsius. Putting the values, we get 3.36 into 10 to the power 5 plus 1 into 4200 into 100. That is 7.56 into 10 to the power 5 joules. As we can see, the heat required to melt the ice and heat the water formed to 100 degrees Celsius is far less than the amount of heat released in condensing the steam. So at the equilibrium, some of the steam condenses and all the ice melts and water formed is at 100 degrees Celsius. To find the mass of the steam that condensed, we can simply divide the heat required to melt and heat the water by latent heat of vaporization of water. That is 7.56 into 10 to the power 5 divided by 2.26 into 10 to the power 6, which is equal to 0.335 kg or 335 grams. Thus, the mass of water at equilibrium will be mass of ice that melted plus mass of steam that condensed. That is 1.335 kg. The steam remaining in the system is 1 kg minus 335 gram that is 635 grams. Since all the steam is not condensed the final temperature of the mixture is 100 degree celsius. This is our answer. To request solution to any question from HC Verma book post the question number and chapter number in comments below. Like and share the video to help other students find us. Subscribe the channel for further updates. Thank you for watching.